I'm Stumpy Nubs, and today I'm going to show you how to make your own table saw jig runners and how to use them to square your table saw sled. I make a lot of different table saw jigs, from the simple to the complex. And since commercially made miter bars are so expensive, I like to make my own adjustable runners. First, you need the right material, something that won't expand and contract with the shop's humidity changes. My material of choice is the common plastic cutting board. You can find these anywhere they sell kitchen items. You need one that's about 3 8 to a half inch thick. Beware of the thicker ones though, especially if they're inexpensive. Sometimes they're little more than just a plastic shell with MDF in the center, and they're just going to fall apart when you cut them into strips. You need one that is solid plastic. Next, you have to dial in your table saw fence. I use a scrap of wood for my test cuts. When the scrap slides smoothly in the miter slot without any wobble side to side, you know your fence is set to the right position and you can begin cutting your plastic. Make your cuts quickly. The blade can melt the plastic and deform your strip if you aren't fast enough, but be sure it stays against your fence. You don't want any deviation in that width that you tried so hard to dial in. I like to cut several strips at once so I have them for future jig making. Clean up the edges with a little sandpaper and cut your new runners to the proper length. You'll need some screws with a large pan head and a Forstner bit that is about 1 16th to 1 8th of an inch wider than the screw heads. It has to be a Forstner bit because the hole that we're going to bore has to have a flat bottom. Make the hole as deep as the head of your screw is thick. I usually bore three holes down the length of each runner. Next, use a regular drill bit that is 1 16th to 1 8th of an inch larger than the threads of your screw to finish boring through the runners at the center of those flat bottom holes you just made. The idea is for your screws to be able to shift back and forth in the hole with the heads below the runner surface. That way you can adjust their position on the jig as needed. Now let me show you how to use these adjustable runners to square up a table saw sled. If you built one of my three table saw sled designs, you already know how important I believe it is to square everything up as you build. If you start with a square base and you build the fence parallel to the back edge, then the fence will also be perpendicular to the right side of the sled. We're going to use that to our advantage when we attach the runner. Take off the fence extension, if you built one of my sleds, and set your sled on the saw. All we need to do is get the side of the table saw sled parallel to the table saw's blade because we already know that the sled's fence is squared to the sled's side. To do this, we'll use our table saw fence, which should already be parallel to the blade. Slide it up against the edge of the sled, checking to be sure that the blade is going to cut your kerf right down the middle. Once it's locked in place, move the sled out of the way. Now your runners are probably thinner than your miter slots are deep. So, put some washers in the slots to raise the runners up above the surface of the saw. Flip your runners so that the large portion of the hole is facing down and lay them in the slots. Make sure that the ends are touching the front edge of your saw so you know where they are when you put the sled on top. Put some strips of double-sided tape on the runners. Use the good stuff, not the cheap stuff. Then carefully lay your sled onto the taped runners, keeping its side up against your saw's fence. Be gentle as you lift the sled back up off the saw. If you use good tape, the runner shouldn't shift as you do. Use an awl to put a divot in the center of each hole. Then tighten your screws into place and it's time to test the runners out. If you're using two runners on your sled, they will likely bind just a little bit the first few times you slide them into the slots. Work the sled back and forth a few times and maybe add some wax to free them up. You want the sled to slide smoothly with no side-to-side -side play. If you did everything right, your first test cut should come out square. If it's off, or if your runners are binding too much, loosen the screws up a little bit, place the sled back on the saw with your table saw fence against the edge, and using a square against the sled's fence and the saw blade, twist the sled slightly on its runners to realign them. Retighten your screws, and you're all done. Squaring a sled by adjusting the runners is, in my opinion, the best way to go. Of course, you do need a good sled design too. Fortunately, you can find three of them, including all sorts of joinery attachments and accessories that you can build yourself, 
over at stumpynubs.com and at Stumpy Nubs Woodworking Journal. Thanks for watching.